Hello friends, this video on biodiversity and conservation part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the main question is why study biodiversity and its conservation? So why, why do we even want to conserve biodiversity and why are we studying this lesson on biodiversity conservation? So let us try to understand its importance. Only then we will be able to understand why we want to conserve it. Biodiversity is important and therefore to conserve it is also important. Now the question is how is biodiversity important? Why do we want so many different varieties of living organisms to exist? So the first thing which says that it is important is that maintenance of ecological stability. Now what do we mean by ecological stability? We all know that in any ecosystem organisms depend on each other for their survival. So every organism is dependent on some other organism for their survival. So nobody can live in isolation. So now if this balance between different organisms is, is spoiled or if the balance is lost, what will happen? The food chain or the food web might get disturbed. Now as a result, organisms can even get extinct also. Now let me give you a very small example. Let us suppose. You think of a food chain, any food chain which is taking place in the ecosystem. For example, you have grass. Grass is being eaten by a grasshopper. And let us suppose the same grasshopper is being eaten by a, a bigger animal, any animal, maybe a frog or something. And then that frog is eaten by a snake, let us say. So this is a food chain. Now, do you think what will happen if... If I try, to, if, if all the grasshoppers become extinct, now if all these grasshoppers are lost, what will happen? There will be nobody to eat the grass, that will be one problem. Secondly, these animals will not have anything to eat. So these animals will also start dying very soon. Now once these animals die, the snakes will also start dying because they will also start starving. So that way is even if one variety of living organism is becoming extinct, that can actually affect the entire food chain so that ways it can disturb the balance of the or it can disturb the stability of the ecology so to maintain the ecological stability is very it is very very important that all the different variety of living organisms exist useful products now these many variety of living organisms also give us a lot of useful products for example food medicines fibers oils rubbers latex etc so these are some of the very useful products which come out of these living organisms just for example if you think of the food which we human beings eat so all of them are derived from some or the other organism now all of those who are vegetarian they eat plant products either directly or indirectly those who are non-vegetarian they feed on some other animals or products of other animals so all our food basically comes directly or indirectly from some other living organism whether it is plant or animal so that means we are all dependent on other organisms for such useful products source of economic wealth now what do we mean by economic wealth now how this biodiversity can also be a source of economic wealth now if you take examples of the park the forests wildlife sanctuaries national parks so they all are actually a source of economic wealth and at the same time they also conserve the living organisms so if you take the example of a national park you have many variety of living organisms which are well protected in that area so that that particular national park is not only a source of economic wealth but it also helps to conserve the living organisms so these are some of the reasons which tell us that yes, biodiversity is important and conserving biodiversity is therefore important. So now we will have to see how can we conserve biodiversity. So now we will look at some of the numbers. Before we talk about the ways by which we can conserve biodiversity, we will look at some of the numbers which, which will tell us that okay, uh, what is the need of the hour? How many species were there? How many species species are currently there? Whether the number of species have decreased or the number of species have increased. So we will talk in terms of numbers now. So if you look at this pie chart, it tells us that 
a lot of animals exist on this planet when compared to plants. So the red color show plants. So this particular portion shows plants and this blue portion shows animals. So if you see the number of animals which exist on this earth is far more than the number of plants which exist on this earth. Now these data which we are going to talk about here they came from some of the published records. However, not all the species have been discovered yet. So many more species might get discovered. So that is why whatever species have been discovered, that data is first taken. And then some estimates or some calculations is being done that, okay, if these many species have been discovered, so there are chances that these many more would have come up. So considering all those estimates and everything, so the uh, scientists will come up with some numbers. And those are the numbers which we are going to talk about here. So there are 7 million species of animals and plants which exist on this earth. So 7 million is again a huge number. So these many different species exist. Now in each species you might have different variety of that particular organism due to genetic diversity. So at the species level itself you have 7 million species of plants and animals. So now, uh, as per the exact calculation which was done somewhere around 2004, it was found that the number was 1.5 million. But when an estimate was done considering all uh, the increase in the number of species or the number of species which have not yet been discovered, so the number came up to 7 million species. And it has been also observed that more than 70% of these species are animals. So here you can see more than 70% are animals and around 22% of them are plants. So here again you can see. So that means lesser number of plants that exist on this earth when compared to animals. Now when we say plants, plants would include everything like algae, fungi, gymnosperms and geosperms so they all will fall under the category of plants. Similarly when we talk about animals, insects, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fishes, mollusks they all will fall under the category of animals. So now we will talk about the numbers of biodiversity for plants and animals separately. So let us first talk about animals because they are more I mean, present in more numbers, almost 70, more than 70% of the species are animals. So let us first talk about animals. So now let us look at the global diversity in case of animals. Now in animals again we have two broad categories of animals that is invertebrates and vertebrates. So let us look at the diversity of both of these groups separately. So first we will talk about invertebrates. And here you can see as uh, the pie chart denotes that here the most diverse group of organisms among the invertebrates are the insects. So if you see, you can just note here that insects are like the most species rich group. So they almost cover 70% of the diversity. So that means the most variety of organisms which you see is in the insects. So they are the most diverse group. Now that also tells us that if there are 10 animals around us, out of them 7 will be insects. I mean that is what we can assume looking at this calculation. So just that is just a rough idea. So insects are the most species rich group that is they have maximum variety of species in them. And then the next most rich species group would be these, this one where you have all others except the mollusks and the crustaceans. So here you can see mollusks fall under this category where and then the next rich would be crustaceans here and remaining all of them fall under this category. So here this shows that insects are one of the most diverse group amongst the animals. So this was about the invertebrates. Now let us consider the vertebrates. So in vertebrates we will talk about fishes, mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians. So here if you see the most diverse or the most the group with maximum variety of species are the fishes. So here you can see these are the fishes. So the color denotes which one is which. So the fishes are almost like almost 50% are covered by fishes and the next are mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians as you can see here. So this is how the diversity are in case of animals and 
similarly we will see it in case of plants as well so these charts actually give you an idea about which are those groups of animals which have got a lot of variety of species within themselves like here we got to know that insects and fishes are some of those groups of animals which have a huge variety of species within them now if you look at this entire uh, numbers of biodiversity in animals you will see that prokaryotes have not been included like bacteria have not been included anywhere now why is it that's because they are the conventional methods which are used to actually identify species they are not good enough to calculate the species of bacteria and there are quite a reason, quite a number of reasons responsible for that one of them is that bacteria they keep on multiplying very fast and that's how they keep on increasing in number extremely fast so the, those traditional techniques they are not able to find out the various different species of bacteria and that is why bacteria have not been included in this entire estimate because if we cannot uh, determine the various species of bacteria how can we comment on how many species of bacteria exist so that is the reason why prokaryotes have not been included in this list so this is a rough idea about the biodiversity of animals so now let us look at plants now in case of plants we talk about the angiosperms here you, as you see angiosperms they, are, they again have a huge variety of species within themselves so here you have the angiosperms and the next one which has a huge variety of species within them are the fungi so the angiosperms and fungi are like species rich group within plants however you have other groups also like algae lichens mosses ferns so they are also there but mostly it is like it is predominantly uh, something which is predominantly present here are the angiosperms and the fungi so this is how basically the global biodiversity is in terms of plants as well as animals so now what we have to look at is how can we conserve the biodiversity how can we protect the animals from being extinct how can we protect the animals from the various dangers which actually lead to their extinction so that those are the things which we will be taking up right now thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.